One team I'm not very fond of. Let's discuss these guys next. If uh, producer Mick uh, wants to bring up the graphic for the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, you know, dominating uh, ESPN every morning. People talking Bronny James. Uh, so let's check them out. Don't even bother placing a bet on them to win the NBA Finals here. 40 to 1 Pacific Division uh, plus 400. The win total 43 and a half. Now they are coming off a 47 win season. Uh, key additions, uh, Dalton Connect. Where's Bronny James Jr.? How insulting you guys not put him on here. Uh, key losses, nothing big here. Torian Prince and uh, Spencer Dinwiddie. And uh, D John's best bet here, Anthony Davis, 28 or more, 28 plus points per game. Here, I don't know, man. The Knicks got playing run written all over them. Again, I think the West is very competitive. Who knows what you're going to get out of teams like the Clippers. The uh, Sacramento Kings could be on the rise with the addition of uh, DeMar DeRozan. That's a pretty good starting lineup they have. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's almost like it's going to be a two-year retirement tour here for LeBron, I think. I got nothing against him, really. But your thoughts overall, big picture here for the Lakers. So you see their win total sitting 43 and a half. And last year I came on the show and I bet the under 48 and a half. And it was kind of because I thought their win total should be closer to that 43, 44 that you're seeing this year. And the roster is pretty much the same. The only thing that's changed is JJ Redick. I mean, Dalton Connect is also a shooter. He'll help them. Um, it's really just JJ Redick coming in. And now JJ Redick, the good thing with JJ Redick is like, if you've listened to his podcast, you kind of know where he stands on a lot of things. And, you know, he's a three-point shooter. He's a lot of math. And I mean, his show is sponsored by DraftKings. He's kind of a better, right? Like he's going to look at this from a math standpoint. Um, and that's kind of where I look at, if you listen to what he's saying, he's saying a lot of things about Anthony Davis and they're they're going to shoot a lot more three-pointers too. I'd imagine that's the math he's going to implore. But when he's talking about Anthony Davis, I think for these last couple of years, we've always assumed like LeBron James and even Stephen Curry, like they need to be moved into more of a secondary role and they've, continue to have to carry their teams like in scoring and everything. I just don't think uh, JJ Reddick's going to make LeBron James do that. And when you listen to him talk about Anthony Davis, he's talking about like making him a hub. He's talking about, he needs to touch the ball as much as possible. And then Anthony Davis has, so if you're looking for a bet on the Lakers here, you know, Anthony Davis had one year with the Pelicans where he did average 28 points per game. I think just feel like they're not going the defensive route. Austin Reeves, D'Angelo Russell, these guys aren't good defenders. They're going the offensive route. And he said he's going to start that the starting five with Rui Hachimura in there too. That's a lot of shooting. That creates a lot of space for Anthony Davis. So that's why I put the best bet. You'll find 28 plus points. If you go looking around, you'll see some plus 550 out there. There's one spot that has plus 950. And right there, that should just grab your attention right there. That That's pretty far off market from what you're seeing uh, elsewhere with the Lakers. In terms of overall projection, yeah, probably a play-in team. I just don't think they they're gonna have to dial back LeBron's minutes to and they just they don't really have the roster that they can do that. So it, it's a it's a very tricky situation. I'm curious to see. I feel like they're gonna make a move here. I don't think they can just run with this like purely. I feel like Austin Reeves, I know a lot of people love him. I feel like he's gotta go and they gotta get someone more defensive in there, but we'll see. So much about navigating the regular season for an older team here like the yeah. Lakers with, uh, you know, a guy with the injury history of Davis, LeBron James is getting older and that typically doesn't point to, you know, a top four spot in the conference. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I think the Lakers, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's so like LeBron's legacy. It's so annoying, like that type of topic coming up, but I do think that's what these final two years are kind of about. It's the Bronny James thing, which is a massive story. I think it's kind of cool. Like a lot of people hate on it and no, he probably wouldn't be in the NBA if it wasn't for his dad, but Giannis's brothers probably wouldn't be in the NBA if it wasn't for Giannis either. Are you that upset that Bronny James is taking a roster spot of another guy you've never even heard of? You probably shouldn't be right. Um, We'll get into that question here in a second, Janice. Uh, yeah, the Grizzlies, a lot of people like them this season. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a, a team preview every Tuesday and Wednesday. Tomorrow we are doing, I believe, the Celtics and the Golden State Warriors. But interesting question here we can tackle, John, from uh, Janice. Ask any thoughts mm -hmm. on Grizzlies at 40-1 to 1 to win the Southwest Division uh, or yes. to win the Southwest Division at 3-1 to 1 with John Morant coming back full camp. Um, yeah, the, the Grizzlies are a trendy pick coming into the season. I'm concerned that the Jumper thing might not correct itself. We'll have to see.